namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa this time i'm going to talk about buddha nusati contemplation of the buddha this is another anusati a contemplation which means it's a meditation that uses directed thought and imagination. There is in the um, Vasudhimaga, in the list of meditations, there is uh, one grouping, or the the contemplation of the three jewels, Buddha Nusati, Dhamma Nusati, Sangha Nusati. Buddha Nusati is probably the most accessible, the most commonly done. This is contemplating the Buddha. This is useful in many ways for rousing up the quality of sada, confidence or faith, for brightening the mind, for aligning oneself with the highest principles of Dhamma. Before I get into the, the practice proper, I just want to introduce the idea of, uh, of the Buddha, who was the Buddha. There's a saying of the Zen master Dogen, if you see the Tathagata, do you see the old man Shakyamuni? If you see the old man Shakyamuni, do you see the Tathagata? And what this uh, means is that you only have a partial view of the Buddha if you focus on the human aspect, old man Shakyamuni, and the Buddha was a human being, Siddhartha Gautama, flesh and blood person who lived in a certain historical time and place. But there's also the Tathagata, the, the uh, enlightened one, the one, the thus gone one. And if you miss one half of that, the old man Shakyamuni or the Tathagata, then you're not seeing the complete picture. In Buddhist history, there has been, in, there was in India for some time amongst some, uh, some schools a tendency to ignore the real human Buddha and focus on the Tathagata as a kind of a deity. And that leads to a partial view. And I think there's the opposite tendency amongst uh, some moderns who want to just see the Buddha as some pretty smart guy who lived at one time, and you know that's all there really is to him. The Buddha, although he was a flesh and blood human being, he did attain to the ultimate awakening. He did penetrate the nature of reality more profoundly than anyone before or since. And the depth of his understanding and the level of his accomplishment has never been matched and cannot be matched. It's uh, supreme. So we keep these two aspects of the Buddha in mind. Now the, the exercise of Buddha Nusati, contemplation of the Buddha, is done by going through the list of the Buddha's attributes and contemplating the meaning of each one by one. This list can be found in the uh, the Pali that occurs several times in the Sutta Pitaka that's called the Mirror of the Dhamma. It's the uh, Itipi So chant, the first section of it is the qualities of the Buddha. It begins with the Bhagawa, which is the first quality of the Buddha. Bhagawa means the Blessed One. And it has uh, a depth of meaning besides the, the fact that you know, the Buddha was uh, blessed in the sense of being a, a sacred person. Blessed also implies he was blessed by someone. And in the lineage of Buddhas, and there is a lineage of Buddhas that there's an infinite number of Buddhas in time and space, and each Buddha that exists had been recognized and blessed by a previous Buddha. In the case of Siddhartha Gautama, 
he was blessed by the Pankara Buddha 92 aeons ago. So in an entirely different time and actually on an entirely different world that he uh, was a young man named Sumedha and he made a vow, I wish to attain Buddhahood and the Pankara predicted, yes, you shall succeed. So he was blessed by Dipankara. The next quality is Arahang, which means that uh, the Buddha was Arahant. All Buddhas are Arahant, but not all Arahants are Buddhas. There's a distinction there. Arahant means uh, perfected. It's the fourth stage of enlightenment, and it's one who has totally immersed oneself in Nibbana as completely realize the unconditioned, then they, they're arahant. The third quality is sama sambudo. Sama means complete or total. Sam means by oneself. And budo means awakened. So fully awakened by his own effort. Samasambuddho is one of the qualities of a Buddha because a Buddha only arises in the world when the teachings of the previous Buddha have been forgotten. And therefore, he has nothing to rely on. He has no previous teachings to use in his journey. And he has to rediscover things by his own effort. So this is uh, by oneself, sam. So, so sama, perfect, perfectly, completely enlightened by one's own effort. Vija charana sampano. That means perfect or uh, complete in knowledge and conduct. Vija is knowledge, understanding. It's the same root as the uh, Veda. You know, in in um, pre-Buddhist teachings, the, the three Vedas were the source of all knowledge. And in the Buddha's case, on the night of his enlightenment, he attained to the Tvija, the three knowledges. He had the knowledge of his own rebirths. He had the knowledge of the workings of karma, and he had the knowledge that his being was completely purified. And this is what um, constituted his Buddhahood. So the Buddha had a very profound depth of knowledge. He himself never claimed to be omniscient, although later tradition did tend to see him that way. I think we are into a realm of speculation if we try and imagine exactly how much the Buddha uh, knew or understood what was the depth of his understanding. We who are not at that stage can't imagine it. But the definition that was settled upon by the commentaries later was that the Buddha was omniscient in a limited sense in that he didn't know everything at once, but he could know anything he chose to direct his attention to, such as the number of fish in the Ganges River. You know, if he had no reason to know that, he wouldn't know it. But if he directed his mind to it, he would know the correct answer. Perfect in conduct, charana, from the verb charati. That means to, the most literal meaning is to walk or to journey. But it it means, um, it's used in a, in a more, uh, less literal sense uh, to mean how one conducts oneself, how one lives. And the Buddha was perfect in his behavior, flawless in his behavior, so he is charana sampano. So vija charana sampano, perfect in knowledge and behavior. Sugato, one who goes well, or uh, this is often translated as the welfarer. It's kind of an awkward translation, but you know it, it means one who uh, su is a prefix. It means uh, well or good. 
Gato is going. So one who, um, in all his doings, all, all his activities, he's doing good. He's doing well. Loka we do, knower of the world. So he understands the world. Loka means the world, and it's used in, depending on the context, it means either this world or it means like the universe or cosmos. It also means the world of experience. And the Buddha had uh, said, for example, that when I say loka, I mean this, uh, this body or I mean the six senses. So the loka for any individual is their experience. But here I think we can take it to mean the world or the worlds, the cosmos. And the Buddha knows that. Widu is again is from the same root as Vijja. So he knows he knows the world. He understands the samsaric condition, which understanding, penetrating the nature of samsara is the way to break free of samsara. And you know, he understood that. Anutaro Parisadama Sarati, the uncomparable or unsurpassed trainer of persons suitable for training. Anutaro means nothing better, the supreme. Parisa is person, Dhamma, and this is this not different than Dhamma, it says Dhamma with plain D. This a simple D, not a aspirated D, not a DH. This Dhamma is a completely different word. And it refers to, uh, you know, in a common usage, it refers to like a horse or an elephant that is under training, being, being uh, taught its, its um, duties. And uh, Sarati is a... Uh, charioteer, and also, by extension, a, a horse trainer. So it's using metaphors from the training of horses in particular, that we, referring to the Buddha's um, human aspect, his natural state, he was a katya, a noble, warrior noble. So uh, a lot of his imagery comes from that background, that would be part of the uh, activities of a warrior noble would be training a horse. You know? So uh, the Buddha is the best trainer in the world, but he trains humans and those who are suitable for training. So some, some people are not suitable for training. They're not going to understand the Dhamma, but the, those who are the Buddha is the best trainer for them. Sata Deva Manusanang. Teacher, Sata, and sometimes the word Sata is used as is one of the titles of the Buddha, though he'd be referred to as the teacher, Sata. Deva, the Dewas, and Manusanang, human beings. So he's teacher of humans and Dewas. The Buddha taught not only humans and all kinds of humans, from the lowliest outcast to nobles and kings, but uh, he also taught in the Dewa realms and even in the Brahma realms. He would go to these different realms and teach the Dhamma to these spiritually advanced beings because the Buddha himself was supreme. So he's capable of teaching even the the kings of the gods. So, Sata Deva Manusanang, Budo, that is um, the final epithet. Budo means awake. It comes from the verb Budeti to awaken. Now, this is the supreme quality of the Buddha, is he's totally awake. You know, anyone who is not fully Enlightened is partially asleep. You're sleepwalking through the world, but the Buddha is completely awake. So these are the 
epithets or qualities of the Buddha. And you can go through this list one by one and contemplate each one, trying to connect in your mind and imagination with the qualities of the Buddha. So that the Buddha becomes for the person who, who contemplates the Buddha becomes not just a, um, a stone image on the altar that is very abstract and uh, not relatable, but it becomes a real living presence. You know, there was this person who attained full enlightenment. How wondrous is that? And to make a connection imaginatively with the Buddha. Because if we're followers of the Buddha's path, we're all connected to the Buddha in a, um, in a very human way in that uh, the teachings are passed person to person handed down through the generations and the connection originates with the Buddha. And we all owe a very great debt of gratitude to the Buddha. So I'll offer that 